Okay, we're back here live in New York City for Hadoop World. Strata plus Hadoop World, this is where the big action is. Big data week uh, in New York City, a lot of action. This is our day two of Silicon Angles. Exclusive coverage of O'Reilly and Cloudera's Strata plus Hadoop World. We're excited to be here. And uh, my two guests joining me is Steve Watt, Chief Hadoop Technologies at Hewlett Packard, HP, and Amr Awadala, the co-founder and now CTO, not the VP of Engineering, <laughs> CTO of Cloudera, Cube alumni, good friend, uh, and uh, it was on the cube that Amr said about Hadoop three years ago now, three and a half years ago, I saw the future and w started Cloudera. So uh, great to have you back on again, Amr. Thanks for having me. You're uh, a rock star in the community and uh, obviously great technical uh, leader at Cloudera, co-founder, is doing great. Um, so welcome to the cube. Thanks, glad to be here. So Steve, obviously we, we love HP, we follow HP closely. Um, obviously there's a lot of stuff or orbiting around HP as a company, um, but within the group that you're in, Enterprise Services or ESSN, which is what's called, um, they're in the converged networking space, infrastructure, networking, storage, servers, and have led that game for many, many years. Right. Um, and now with Flash, solid state, converged infrastructure is morphing to a whole nother IO-centric infrastructure where Hadoop, uh, becomes important when you have industry standard hardware uh, like what HP offers. So, so tell us one before we get into the whole big big data Hadoop yeah, sure. cloud era relationship. What are you guys doing with Hadoop right now? What's the internal view and and roadmap of big data within HP? So, uh, absolutely. You know, I think uh, when we look at Hadoop, um, we sort of have two perspectives um, and two areas that we want to address, which is that one, there's a lot of platform complexity. So customers struggle to understand what hardware do I buy and how do I configure that hardware and manage that hardware for Hadoop. And then the other a aspect is application complexity, which is how do I apply Hadoop once I have it to solve my business problems, right? So we're, we're focusing on both those areas. My group, H HP as a whole, my group specifically focuses on the platform complexity. We have reference architectures for Hadoop as well as an appliance for Hadoop. So obviously within HP, you know, they had that, you know, billion, billions of dollars they spent autonomy, yeah. which is essentially the software side now. But there's really two problems happening in this ecosystem. One is obviously the software and the big data analytics, the application side, but also there's a lot of technical challenges on compute, a lot of <laughs> energy and making it all work. Is that where you're now focused, or are you also transitioning? Are you, do, you tra do you trade over to the autonomy groups? So, so uh, we tend to go in uh, with Hadoop, Autonomy, and Vertico when we go and talk. You know, have a customer conversation about data management. Um, they sort of all do different things. You know, you sort of look at uh, if it's a, a scale, you have autonomy on the far left with you know unstructured document level analysis indexing, Vertico on the far right, which is. Uh, structured data, real-time access, and then you have Hadoop, which is sort of on the slider in the middle that can sort yeah. of move around. <laughs> and so um, you, uh, we tend to just take a consultative approach and figure out what works best for the customer. So Amr, I want to ask you a couple questions, because uh, since we last talked, you uh, transitioned as VP of Engineering at Cloudera, obviously the co-founder, to CTO. And as the market moves more to the business value conversation, which has been a big part of, the part of our topics this week, you're now talking to partners now, so is your new role, you know, you're stepping out of the day-to-day -day engineering, which you now have a, a VP of Engineering. Explain the transition uh, of your role and what you're working on now. Um, it's standard, that happen, happens with many, many enterprises. I need um, both functions as companies grows. Uh, you, ne you need them to be separate. Uh, the VP engineering is about uh, the tackling and the hiring, right? It's about hiring uh, the engineers, about uh, uh, executing on the product roadmaps. Shipping code? And shipping <laughs> the, the releases <laughs> on time. <laughs> yeah, so it's a very tactical role. Uh, Which you did very well uh, for yeah, many I, years. Yeah, I started yeah, the company at the beginning and built a team to about 100 engineers, and that's when I handed it off. Uh, the CTO role is a more strategic role about where the company should be going with this technology, how to stay aligned with uh, what uh, our customers and our partners are, are asking for and what they're building, and how to make sure it all fits in the long term. So that's kind of what the CTO ro role entails. Uh, that said, I mean, it's, uh, it's sometimes very hard to define what, what a CTO actually does. So when I was uh, in the process of kind of crafting the new CTO role for myself, I talked to a number of CTOs, uh, famous uh, CTOs in the Valley. One of them is Greg Papadopoulos was the ex-CTO for Sun. And he, he said a very interesting, he gave me a very interesting quote actually. He said, uh, a CTO is like the CFO in this sense. The CFO is not responsible for making the revenues. The sales team makes the revenues. However, if the CFO mispredicts the revenues, you fire the CFO. So in the same <laughs> sense, the CTO is not responsible for building the product. The engineering team builds the product. 
However, if the CTO mispredicts a key trend that affects where the product should be going, you fire the CTO. Yes, let's talk about those <laughs> trends, because I, I told, by, by the way, that's a brilliant uh, uh, yeah, suggestion, yeah. because you have to go scour the landscape. So I know you've been doing a lot of travel, and I tried to, uh, I was in the office, I see if yeah, you're around. Yeah, like we say sometimes the CTO is chief travel officer. Chief travel <laughs> officer, <laughs> you got me on that. I was trying to sneak that one in there. <laughs> okay, so yeah, are you actually in China and with Mike and, and so, and, yes. and Kurt, so that you guys are, it's a global landscape now, so yeah. the market's changing. So yeah. what are you observing around the, on the market side? Obviously, Hadoop is now mainstream to the point where big data is no longer just Hadoop, it's other things. Actually, and I wouldn't say it's mainstream yet. We're not mainstream, we're still at the beginning. We are still at the beginning of this movement. It's going to be a massive movement. It's going to take years to reach its maturity. Uh, so I wouldn't say we are mainstream. I mean, it's definitely growing very quickly. This event now is, uh, what, 2,500 people showing up at this event? Yeah, yeah. Four years ago, it was just 500. So you can see at the growth. Okay, so I'm gonna say more diverse, more yeah. diverse, with the more actors and business yes. involved. So, yes. so yeah, I, I would agree but with but you. But I define mainstream to be more about how where VMworld is. Like VMworld now is like thirty thousand people go to VMworld. Yeah. Oracle World is what like ninety thousand yeah. people. Virtual That's mainstream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're still yeah. a few years Just away. Just don't sell for six hundred million dollars to EMC. And <laughs> 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 a forty billion dollar market oh, cap. Oh, <laughs> okay. Go on. I know you know the VMware guys. I love, I love them. Shout out to EMC and. VMware. I love Pat Gelsing, he's been on theCUBE many times. Um, Genius move. Um, so, uh, <laughs> always good entertainment on theCUBE, always fun. Um, okay, so that's good. So the trend-wise, you know, as you look at the landscape, HP has a lot of moving parts. So mm -hmm. how do you look at um, uh, partnering with HP, for example? Because, like I said, they have a lot of moving parts. Huge conglomerate company. They got Autonomy, they got Vertica, they got ESSN, all huge opportunities. And yeah, ESCN's I mean, the I muscle. Mean first, it's no question that HP is the quintessential Silicon Valley company. So. I mean, we are born in Silicon Valley. We are part of the of the of, of uh, the newer kind of generation of companies in there. It would be a shame on us if we don't partner with somebody like HP. Now they have many many products that we need to integrate with, and uh, right now the most obvious ones is, uh, as Steve highlighted earlier, was to get up and running a Hadoop cluster with all the hardware uh, on the server side, on the network side. It's it's it, it is a yeah. complex proposition. It's not something that you can yeah. do. Yeah, we were just at IBM IOD, and they they're now positioning big data, and yes. they are not forking Hadoop. They are embracing. Yes. Yes, into right. their entire st offerings, and they, but they may have some top-level solutions that are yes. more built for. Same thing. The same thing. Like uh, like on the on the IBM side, you have uh, Mitiza. On the HP side, you have Vertica. Vertica. Yeah. On the IBM, wh what's the equivalent of IBM for search for uh, for autonomy? I don't know. Idle. <laughs> Idle. Infosphere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Infosphere. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, the the big it's uh, you know uh, sort of uh, you know we're 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 effectively. Um, trying to you know there's there's a couple of problems first you know i think you've got to get the the you know the horse in front of the cart right so when when customers talk to us about hadoop right i do, you got to be careful about coming in straight away to the line of business i think because they they can go off and sort of start to figure out how to decompose things that are business problems into things yeah. that run as map reduce but the the there's a a a huge learning curve that's happening in the data center where these guys just don't grok hadoop right and so, you know, we're really trying to make this simple and basically get them the platform first. So that's the horse in front of the cart. And then you come in and let layer the solutions cases, on top of that. Let the use cases drive yeah, yeah. more of a la carte. Yes, yes. I mean, so we say, like we frequently would say, there's so much buzz about our own big data, which, which, is, which is nice but and everything because yeah. it starts the conversation. But at the end of the day, you need to be solving a real business Absolutely. problem. Absolutely, yeah. So we, we, we just look, we, we love, of course, we love, of course, all of the buzz and, 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 yeah. and so on around it. But I say, like, this big data movement is very similar to the e-business movement that happened a decade ago, right? It's just business. It's just yeah. business. And we're doing this at the No one talks about e-business anymore. Yeah, exactly. Are you in e-business? No, no, everyone's <laughs> exactly. e-business. 100% <laughs> and penetration. And we, think, we think the same it's thing will happen with yeah. data. Like, we've got big agree. data right now a few years, and that's just going to be a hundred. In fact, we made that call just two days ago. We said, big data will be no longer just like e Like, are you in, are you in big data business? E yeah, I mean, what's next? So I think solutions are driving it, right? Yes. So so like, I mean, no one talks about client server problem, anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you being a client server? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really is. I mean, it's, it's sort of, to quote an adage, you know, everything's bigger in Texas. So it's just where I live, you know. <laughs> we don't have big data. We just have data. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Amr, I want to talk about partnerships. So you guys have been very successful. I talked to Mike Olson on the yesterday yeah. and, and looking at your briefings. Obviously, Impala, yeah. huge deal. Um, huge. Great, great success. Yes. Um, but you, as you roll out Impala, the big data platform, you new, new logos and everything. You guys have been successful with your partnership milestones. Looking at the perform business performance, mm -hmm. um, 
the partnerships have been impressive and they're growing yeah. significantly. What are you seeing when you talk to like say HP and other partners around what's working? What's their mindset? Where's their what's the psychology right now in the marketplace? Obviously platforms, you, you touched on a little bit of it. Can you expand more on that relationship as the the things cross the chasm? People who are running business like HP and other companies, they have to integrate in. What's the mindset? What's some of the conversations that you're having? I mean, the theme is the same one we just discussed earlier, which is the buzz is great and everything, but we are about providing solutions. And when you're providing a solution, there isn't just one fixed formula that solves everything. Right. It's a mix of things that will lead to solving the business case that the, the business is trying to achieve. And that's why these partnerships are very important. And that's why it's important to distinguish in the market between partnerships, which is what we call Barney partnerships, which yeah. is talk, hey, shake uh, my hand. Yeah, I love, love you. Yeah, we <laughs> love me, you, right? Barney, <laughs> 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 yeah, Barney. Barney deal. This is true, solid partnerships where we're together, right. delivering a solution, and both mm -hmm. making... Well, let's uh, talk about the Barney partnership versus yes. like the real delivery, because, yes. you know, Barney, me, I love you, I love, got that. But, yes. you know, one of the dangers you mentioned was you get salespeople selling something too early early, yes. uh, you can have some missed delivery there. So yes. where are we on the delivery side? HP is a great example because, you know, when they sell, Donatelli, I know him. I talk to him. I know him personally. Yeah. He's like, he's a sales machine. Yeah. Yeah. He's not going to, well, we, if we had this. No, it's got to be baked. So, well, what well so, so I got a comment there, right? So, you know, our strategic relationship with Cloudera grew out of our natural business partnering yeah. where we started meeting in the market. Yeah, you know, the It started with our sales force going, hey, customers are asking for Cloudera solutions on our hardware. You know, Let's, let's uh, strategically align this so we can deliver more efficiently. So, uh, you know, I just think it's a, a natural organic yeah, that's evolution. Good, that's a good response. I think yeah. that's legit because that's really glad what's happening. You guys make the industry standard hardware. Yeah. Uh, if I said commodity hardware, I'd be getting phone calls from the, uh, the server guys at uh, uh. Gantier would be like, what are you doing? So <laughs> like, uh, um, no, industry. You give a chance yeah. to counter that. Yeah, yeah, well, no, no so um, I, I think it's a great point, right? So. What what is commodity? You know, um, I it's a personal frustration of mine. <laughs> you know, there's a <laughs> lot of folklore out there about how you configure Hadoop clusters, and uh, there's a perception that commodity means cheap. Commodity to me means that you're getting those same resources more. If finish the price performance is much better by scaling out than yeah. scaling up. Yeah. That's what commodity means. It doesn't mean yeah, cheap. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean we have a term inside SiliconANGLE we call ghetto servers because actually we know you we yeah. build our own servers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we build our own servers and that we call that ghetto servers. So, uh, so because it's cheap and, and and you know what there's a lot of risk points but we're we're, we're starting up. That's the fun. But about you know if you're a business you put in blades <laughs> and that's commodity hard, it's low cost. Yes. You know not cheap, right? <laughs> yeah. So I totally want to just get that out there because no, I always joke I industry standard. What the hell does that mean? But that's what what's fun mean? about Hadoop, right? I mean I've had. Hadoop clusters with laptops in my cluster. You know, and if I'm trying to solve a particular, do some data set analysis, it's you use what you got, yeah, right? Yeah. It's easier to manage if it's homogenous. I was showing, I was showing Amr our HBase app last night, and, and it, I'm embarrassed by how cheap or, <coughs> or low cost the hardware is. Um, and, and I think that's the general consensus of Hadoop. People say, hey, you know what? I can implement solutions at a very low cost way, and that actually is tailor made for an HP because now you can then bring in other elements. But you know, the risk yeah. is if it goes down, if you don't have the right support, yeah. um, it crashes. But you know, Hadoop but is but great. But, but to attack your question, which is a very important one about the partnerships, and a big company like HP, a big company like IBM or Oracle, and many of our other partners, they don't move into a new market unless the customers yeah. are giving them the strong signal that we're ready for them, right? So, so this is not jumping ahead of the, putting the horse in front, the right. in front of the horse, it's not. Yeah, and also the other thing I would point out, just my observation in doing our CUBE interviews and talking to a lot of those players is the business is so massive at the scale of an HP is that yeah, um, exactly. Hadoop is not cannibalizing anything, it's just shifting the solutions and there's a lot of mashups. So <coughs> above Hadoop, there's other things. You got graph database time series, like IBM has Informix. There's all kinds of different stuff. There's not a, it's not a mutually exclusive environment, right? Yeah. So yeah. Hadoop works well and then we'll grow. So that's a big misconception that I hear from people is they, oh, oh Hadoop is gonna do, has to take away from something else. Actually, we're seeing uh, structured RDM uh, relational databases actually expand. Those yep. scope of projects yep. are yep. actually expanding. Yep. So, okay, great guys. Thanks for coming inside the cube. Uh, final question, um, uh, we always do this. One, one year out to five years out, shoot the arrow forward. We're in the Hadoop big data, data cosm, ecosystem, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's early, it's crossing the chasm, on its way, I think, to a mainstream revolution, as I posted on SiliconANGLE today, I called it the, the South by Southwest for geeks, Hadoop world, and so, <laughs> shoot forward, what's happening in the market uh, relative to overall growth, how's it gonna evolve, just your vision. 
So uh, I want to talk about one thing, which is it, it's not necessarily even that visionary, but it'll be one year from now, which is HP Moonshot platform, right? It works great for Hadoop. Hadoop's a, a natural platform where you can partition the, the computation. And uh, we've got our system on a chip Moonshot platform that's coming out. We plan to provide reference architectures on it next year. And uh, I think that's going to be quite revolutionary. We have Armor and Cloudera revolutionizing the data man management uh, middleware stack, and we're going to come in and revolutionize the data center. I just want to interrupt you there because I want to share the, the audience out there. Moonshot is, I mean, I mean HP's new hardware platform based on low energy uh, consumption. We had a whole cube segment at HP Labs. So if you search uh, HP Moonshot Silicon Angle on YouTube, you'll find a slew of great videos on there. This is absolutely revolutionary hardware. I mean, we, we were popping our eyes up. Can we get a box? And it was only the, the prototype. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure uh, people haven't heard about it yet, but you will check out Moonshot. So that was a good, good, uh, good vision there. Yeah. Amr? So a year out, I would say Impala will turn this industry upside down in, many, in more than one way yeah. and expect to see more things from us uh, along these lines, along the Impala lines, and then meaning low latency. So lo low latency is definitely a very big theme for 2013. And then five years out, uh, Hadoop World will be as, as big as VMworld. It's going to be 20,000 people. That's right. For them. <laughs> 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 okay. And that's when we can say it's mainstream. <laughs> okay. Mainstream Hadoop in five years. <laughs> I think maybe sooner, who knows, with this kind of pace. Um, it's exciting. Uh, uh, Steve Watt, Chief Te Hadoop Technologist at HP, and I'm Ron Dalla, co-founder and CTO of Cloudera, Inside the Cube. We'll be right back with our next guest right after a short break. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, that was good. Right. It's fun. Oh, that moonshot, I would have had more time. We looked at all the programs out there and identified a gap in tech news coverage. There are plenty of tech shows